Hey, Moriora. Ka tangi te titi, ka tangi te kaka, ka tangi ho ki aho. Ti hei muri ora. Ko intoto te maunga, ko tana te roto, ko kabana te awa, ko manaki tanga te waka, ko habesha ko amhara na iwi, ko nati aroha te hapu, no Ethiopia aho, engari e te noho o ki te rio aroha. Uh, ke te take take o rumutaka ko Yosef Ayala aho. Noreira ete iti ete rahi turino ate fare tena koto tena koto tena koto katoa. My name is Yosef Ayala. My mountain is Ntoto. Uh, my uh, uh, lake is uh, Kabana and uh, I'm originally from Ethiopia. My tribe is Amara, um, but my new community is Aroha. And um, my waka, my, my canoe, is, is that of service, Manakitanga. And uh, I live in Aroha Valley, and I'm very excited to welcome you all to New Frontiers uh, to be part of this co-created activity and event. EHF, the Edmund Hillary Fellowship, was founded with the mission of developing new solutions for humanity's greatest challenges from here in Aotearoa, New Zealand. And they were born with the premise that if we build a community of change makers from all over the world with different lengths and perspectives, that we can incubate solutions and create new ripples of global transformation, that we can create new types of solutions that can have a positive impact in the world. And we're inspired by the life and story of Sir Edmund Hillary, who was a humble beekeeper, grew up outside of Auckland, and he did the impossible, was the first person to climb Mount Everest with Tenzing Norgay. But so much of his life, was about the spirit of service and the spirit of community. He embodied the spirit of leveraging our talents, our unique platforms, to serve the collective well-being of humans and our planet. EHF was founded in partnership with Immigration New Zealand, who helped co-create the first immigration policy focused on impact. A nation saying, we want people who are here to change the world. And help create the first policy that is taking a very transformative approach to how we identify and nurture human potential. And EHF was founded in partnership with the Hillary Institute. We'll hear from Mark Prain, the founding director of the Hillary Institute, which was founded with the blessing of Sir Ed himself and with Helen Clark as his patron. And at the Institute, our goal is to identify and promote exceptional leaders. The Nobel Prize for Leadership in the times that we live in. And we'll hear from one of the laureates, Johan Rockström, later on. EHF was born 18 months ago, and it's been a crazy, amazing, and extraordinary journey. We've learned a lot of lessons. We've been humbled through that experience. So I'd like to share with you some of those lessons that we've learned. I've tried to consolidate them into 10 key lessons. So the first lesson from this journey so far is that we're paving the path we're walking on. When we're creating the new frontiers of global transformation, there's no template for us to follow. And if we start from a place that we know the future, then we'll have failed. If there's already a path that's there and we're walking on it, then we're not creating any change. We're just doing the same things over and over again. Second lesson. Community is about trust and relationships. 
We learn from natural ecosystems that everything in life is about relationships. It's the relationship between water, the sun, carbon, and many minerals that creates trees. It's the relationship between hydrogen and oxygen that creates water. If you look around all everywhere, everything is, is, is a part of relationships between very diverse beings around them. A fellowship, a community, is also a living ecosystem. And so if you want to build a real and strong community, then we have to invest in relationships. Lesson number three. If we're trying to create green-looking hills, then let's plant grass. If we're looking to create a forest, then we plant trees. Grass grows very fast and turns the hill very green really quickly, but it also dies fast as well. Trees take a very long time to grow, but if you step into a native forest, you see very rich life in there, and those things take time. You know, in the startup world, sometimes we get obsessed with the idea of outcomes. Any outcome is better than no outcome. Or let's just grow. Growth is, is the only answer to everything. We cannot rush solutions. We're very excited to be co-creating and creating a whole new ecosystem, a rich and diverse, lush forest together here. Lesson number four. Diversity is hard. You know, diversity does not end by having a room with 50% men and 50% women. Diversity doesn't just come up when you bring a wealthy person or someone with less means and expect for inclusion to happen magically. It doesn't emerge by just putting a whole lot of people with different perspectives and wave a magic wand and something beautiful appears out of nowhere. Diversity for us is not about virtue signaling. It is about identifying the unique gifts each person has and weaving that together with one another. I don't know how many of you have, have seen a pine forest and, and stepped in into a native forest. You can see the difference, huh? In the native forest, what, what, what's really beautiful is, is all the different pieces of life. They're so diverse, but they're always interacting with each other. And for us, it is really about creating change and, 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 and leveraging creativity at the edges, at the intersections between different forms of life. And we're really pushing boundaries of what diversity means to us. And we're learning actively, but it is not an easy path. And that's also a big part of what we're creating in this, in this Friday right now. We're all coming from many different walks of life. Lesson number five, Hetangata, Hetangata, Hetangata. It's about the people, it's about the people, it's about the people. Yet, it is so easy to be distracted from that. You know, when we're building EHF, we're creating an, a community of people. We're not creating a community of organizations. Yes, organizations are amazing, but they come and they go. They get born and they die. And the organizations that die, they turn into compost and create very rich soil and space for new life to emerge. For us, it's about accepting the natural cycles of life. But really at the core of it, it is about the humans, it is about the people. And we are here to back exceptional people to create global change. Lesson number six, systemic change does not come by add-ons. You know, if, if you have a heart disease and you're looking at a big, juicy bacon burger, you just can't add green leaves and make the bacon go away. <laughs> right? Change comes by creating a better alternative 
We can't just keep on adding on to what we have if we're really committed to creating something that changes. And that takes courage. As Sir Ed has told us, it is not the mountains we conquer, but ourselves. Change does not come by add-ons. Lesson number seven. Global impact starts locally. If we cannot serve our community, then how on earth can we serve the world? You know, for us, global change is not about this ungrounded feeling and idea of scale. Our ego likes scale, likes big things. And sometimes, as entrepreneurs, it is very easy to be motivated by the idea that we're not doing enough. But for us to really create something unique and beautiful, we've got to start here. We've got to start in our home base. And that is local. And those are the things that create a rippling effect across the world. Lesson number eight. A zero-sum game road is a, an absolute dead end. You know, I used to be a competitive runner, and I used to find the idea of losing, the fear of losing motivating me more than the desire to win. And I get it. But if our mission is not strong enough to motivate us, then we result to being motivated by the idea of beating someone else. We're building EHF with the premise that your success is our success, and our success is your success. That is how we create a very dense and lush forest together. We see it here in Aotearoa that when a species takes over, it's called a pest, right? Around us, we see monolithic organizations and businesses, specifically in places like Silicon Valley, and, that, and all of us are kind of starting to lose trust in some of those types of organizations. If we're truly committed to systemic change, then let's not follow that path and create a new one. Lesson number nine. Reality is honest, so be honest. As an entrepreneur who's very optimistic, I find it hard to always be honest. It's tough to be honest when things aren't working, when your vision isn't always aligned with what you want to create, where a past success inhibits us from changing tack when we need to. We see it here in Aotearoa, where a big backbone for our economy, the dairy industry, has really helped us to be where we are today. And it's, and it's helped us achieve a lot of success. And now when we're learning the externalities of that, it's hard for us to be really honest of what is really happening beneath the ground. If we're truly committed to creating a zero emissions economy, then we cannot bullshit our way out of cow shit. Let us be honest with what's happening. Lesson number 10, and this is one I stole from one of our fellows, Vicky. When you have a good idea, set it free. We're really inspired by the Inspiral community who are open sourcing their technologies, their ideas, their, their social technologies and, and, and processes. Sometimes it's very easy to get obsessed with the idea of protectionism, You've created something, you've got to put an IP in it, and, and it's mine, and it's yours. Yeah, that can work for a bit, but that kind of inhibits our progress, our collective well-being. It doesn't allow others to be part of our success. So when we birth something beautiful, let's set it free. So these are some of the 10 lessons that we've been learning on this journey so far, and we'll be sharing with you what we learned throughout this journey. Thank you.